Today we start the subject of trees by looking and studying our references. It is by their shape that trees are identified. The way that we do this is by using just one colour, a dark, such as Payne's grey, neutral tint or black. This will allow us to learn some brushwork. How different brushes used in a few assorted ways will give the marks required to produce these tree shapes without the added confusion of colour. Be prepared to hold your brushes in ways that you have never considered before. Direction is the other part of the equation today. This is important mostly when we paint the foliage. I will also mention my half, half and half rule of tree construction. The individual trees that we will be looking at include palm, pine, willow and finally a white tree with some negative painting, that is painting around the tree in branch shape. So here we go, enjoy. some trees but what I wanted to do first is to actually explain what um, my little rule of thumb is that with trees we have a tree trunk filling up that comes out and from that goes the branches and then from that comes more branches and from that comes more twigs now this is not um, there's plenty of exceptions to the rule, but my easy way of thinking about it is that whatever size you have for your tree trunk, the next size from that becomes about half of what that one is. So uh, in girth or in length? In girth, yes, in the width. From that one comes another one that's about half of what that one was. And we always try to make them a little bit interesting. And then from that comes another one that's practically nothing. So that's half and half and half. Half and half and half. So you get smaller, half is half half and half and if you keep that in mind because it you have to have enough um, support for your tree trunks and for your branches as they get further up now um, so as they turn as they turn into smaller and smaller it means that you able, the the base of them is able to support what's happening above them if you were to have a branch that's as wide as that up here, can you imagine how easily, how strange it would not only look, but it would actually be impossible for it to, to hold because of the weight. Um, now, I'm not going to get into the, uh, into the logistics of things not being that way, or they don't seem that way when you have a look at them. The other thing to remember is that they are on ground. Trees are not floating entities. So always be aware to ground your tree trunks as well, um, your, yeah, your tree trunks into that. It's a bit like people. If they're not grounded, they look like they're jumping. Well, there's not too many jumping trees out there as far as I know. Uh, okay, so what we're going to look at now is shape. So one of the ways that you know that that is a pine tree is by its shape. You know that this one is a dead gum tree because of its shape. You know that those are palm trees because of the shape. And that one is a willow tree because of its shape. And so, so one of the more important things to do, remember is to actually work with the shape. And so we're going to do a couple of these just on one piece of paper. And if we end up turning our boards and, and working with them upside down or something, it won't matter because we're only doing exercises tonight. 
And this is the reason I'm only going to use one colour, is so that we actually work, we're going to start with that type of thing, where we actually work with our size going down to different, different sizes. And I'll just show you a couple. So um, different types of trees. I think we were mostly working with negative shape here, but that's um, almost a gum tree type one. But these ones in particular, we've got lots of um, palm tree type ones and pines and little bushes and stuff like that. And we will hopefully get to the negative painting around a white one as well. So this is where we're going to start tonight. And then there's a different way that I work with the foliage on this type of thing as well. So little bits of things to happen. Um, so I might actually grab another piece of paper. And we might start but with something Well, then you outline them, you, you sketch them in. I will sketch them um, in, a, in a general sort of way. Um, so what I want to do tonight is actually just work with... Um, sorry, I'm just debating whether to start with that. No, let's start with this one. And I'm just going to use a round brush. One of my favourites. Uh, I don't like the size. shape of that. Uh, keep them smaller rather than too big. If you go all the way up, that means there's more paint in it. It's, it's going to be harder. So uh, since I was just playing with this one, I'm just going to make it a little bit more interesting because I don't like the way that looks either. Very bad shapes um, can absolutely ruin what you've just done. Okay, and some of this will just make up anyway. But what I want to do at the moment is grab my paint nice thick paint and starting at the bottom because that's the way they grow. I'm just going to as we get further up the tree the way you hold your brush is a little bit less. The point on this is atrocious. I think I'll change brushes right about now and go to a smaller one anyway. On the bottom there, all I need to do is just smooth that out so that it looks like there's a bit of round happening there. But so even though I've done some of I wouldn't normally draw in most of those other marks. Um, I would much prefer to work with my brush. Now immediately, as soon as I start to go for the, those um, the softer, the smaller branches, I prefer to use my brush further up the up the, the handle. Very good. I'm always happy for anybody to finish my sentences because <laughs> I usually get halfway through one and then um, end up concentrating on what I'm doing and don't forget to talk. Did I get you right? You say that find the, <coughs> the, the main trunk, but for the, the fiddly bits, the, the smaller branches, mm -hmm. You don't bother to sketch them in, you just use... I very rarely ever sketch them in. Okay. Uh, that makes it harder then to try and follow them? Um, look, yeah. I don't mind because we can always rub them out later on anyway. So that part of things is fine. But trying to follow those marks uh, can be tricky. a little bit tricky. Yeah. So okay. use your judgement, go a little bit um, between both. So some sketching marks is fine, but as you end up going through, um, just always sort of think. And this is where I was talking also about the liner. So right on these very, very last ones, uh, a rigger brush, liner, whatever you like to call it, it actually brings in some very nice, soft, very small, very delicate marks, which is what these are. And again, using it at the end of my brush like that, I have less control, and that way they become more natural, the marks, most of the time. Uh, <coughs> and they can just read better.
So that's sort of the basic tree trunk. Um, I'm just going to show you a different way of working. Now, when I um, just sort of to recap on that, when I did that, I actually pressed my brush down. Um, I'll just do another tree trunk. So press it down and work, and as you come up, you lift your brush a little bit more. And that way you get that fineness there as well. Um, so that's one way of working with that. And then of course you do the uh, you do the extra marks there. So uh, one thing to think about is that they don't all come from the same intersection as well. There's usually quite a few intersections into these trees as well. And funnily enough, it also looks quite natural when some of the marks don't actually add up, uh, meet up. Sorry, hold So you can see here where some of the marks have got gaps in them. In the hole, that actually comes across as being quite natural. It's surprising. Even now, though it looks as though it's discontinuous. That's right, yep. Um, of course, I would probably do some foliage on that as well. And um, are you okay if I just do one more mm. type of brush hold before you go home and do go back and do some? Now this time I'm going to use my hand over my brush and I'm going to leave those alone but I'm going to do another little one on the side. Now what I'm going to do is actually just work my way around. Not putting in just too much detail. And so instead, and now I'm going to come with my brush up. And we have tree. Okay. So that's what I want you to practice. I want you to try. So if you think about doing. Um, a little mark there. Sorry, I can't do it that way. I have to do it over here. And so try and, and have a sweep, a couple of different types of sweeps, rather than actually doing the whole. What we're really looking for is that broken mark in between, because if those type of trees always have the sky holes, and so that's one thing. And uh, I'm going to leave it there, go, go back to your places and have a go. So there's two or three different ways to hold your brush there, okay? So I'm just going to work with that one aspect of that again. So now that I've got these ones here, I'm just going to do the same thing as what I did here on these ones, okay? Um, one way to work with that is to give yourself, to work out where you might have some foliage because if you work, if you see this one here for instance, can you see how it's not just leaves everywhere? There's like groupings of leaves. Now this, that one could be quite a big group, but there's groupings of leaves here and there. Okay, and if you work with that, and then there's larger areas or smaller areas of sky holes in between, a lot of different, um, a lot of different trees actually do this type of foliage. They're not necessarily, you wouldn't get it with this one, different story, but even a willow tree, for instance, still has an element of grouping within that. Uh, so what we're going to do is put some leaves over this and give it some, some structure, I suppose, whatever you like to call it. And so the idea is, again, to skim the page. Now I do work my brush a little bit around so that we're not doing all the same direction. If you do all the same direction, becomes quite boring. 
but if you work with your brush, shifting your... And it's not very wet your brush, is it? Uh, it's yeah, wet enough. Really, really, yeah. It's wet enough and I've have, um, kept a fair bit of paint in there, but it's mostly about how I'm putting it on the page. It's <clears throat> the fun part about this though is, is you get these little uh, feathery marks on the edge and I find that those are what makes them look like trees because if you, again if you actually worked with Making your marks just, too. Uh, or made in the tiny little twigs that are supporting them. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And so it doesn't. It's okay to have some that are more filled in in places, but also um, having these little feathery marks. Now, if we had done even part of that and then decided, well, okay, there's a bit here that you needed. Um, maybe we've ended up with. Um, some over this side for whatever reason and so you can actually then fill in the gaps and make them be part of the hole I think I just need a little bit more dark just there and so that's one way to work with your brush I often work differently and it's something that in general you're going to have to watch is I'll, I'll pick up a brush and I won't necessarily explain how I do it but if you're watching that oh okay she's got a head over top of a brush she's skimming the page um, then it becomes something it's it's a different way of working uh, okay so now to get to some other ones. Working with us with that same style of thing, um, one of the other things I'll talk about is direction. This I was talking about having them be rounded, all of that sort of thing. When we're doing willow trees, for instance, though, we're looking at shapes. I will just do a bit of I not long ago went down to do um, Tassie and this was one in Hobart I think or oh, was it Launceston one or the other and this tree was absolutely amazing. Willows have always been one of my favourites <laughs> and I'm not going to be too worried about it getting the extra tone on it but let's try it going down see whether that works. And often I will actually work with my brush going this way as well. Now if I was doing it this the other way, it probably would be easier. I'm not sure. It's been a while since I've done this. Let's try it the other way. <laughs> Can you see how already there's more of a feeling yeah. of it being a willow tree than, um, than this type of tree? I don't think I'll make it that big. And it's raining. To make, um, and I'll bring the tree trunk over this way a bit more because by the time willow trees get to any they have mostly the they go right down to the ground actually a lot of the time unless they're cut back because of um, people needing to be sitting underneath them or something so the direction can make a huge difference to what you're doing as well. Yeah. Okay. No, I need occasionally. Just a little bit. 
Yeah. <laughs> the comment was that I have done this before. Yeah, sometimes I have. <laughs> okay, so a different one again is our palm trees. Or actually, I'll go with the pine tree first. Right. So again, a pine tree. Similar type of mark, but again, in a different direction. So I can do the part, the, and I often, for exercises, I don't mind using the same page and there. You wouldn't normally do this, of course. Um, so with this one, the, the, palm, the pine, pine trees are going upwards and outwards. And so that's the way they get painted. There's various brushes that would do the similar thing. And even here, I'm sort of working from the inside out. But also not trying to make them... Uh, we're not looking for the perfect Christmas tree, perhaps. Uh, we're just looking to do the... Taper towards the top. Yep, just about to start doing that. Okay. Now I'm probably going to run out of room. Got that way. And of course, you could actually go further if you wanted to, but that's as far as mine. It's obviously going to go. Alright, so I might as well do the next one as well while we're at it. Um, I'm just going to change that aspect a little bit. Okay, and lastly, a, pine, a palm tree, sorry. Now, I like some palm trees. I can do that slightly differently. There's a couple ways to, to work with the trunk. One way is to, is instead of um, going straight up and down like we have been, uh, it's also a case of sort of working across. Because often palm trees have, they sort of... It's for the other Okay, so they sort of have that sort of aspect to them, and and then when you get to the top, and again, I'm just going to push my brush around. It's just easier. To go downwards, but then to... Now some need to be a bit longer, some need to be a bit shorter, and they also curve. Now I know I haven't gone very long with the palm with the tree trunk, which I could have done easily, but um, I'll bring, make the next one a bit bigger. I might try, where is it, a flat brush this time. Because even though I don't paint with a flat brush all that often, uh, for this type of thing it's not too bad. You see again how much more natural it is by not trying to make it be perfect. Um, not trying to make it, I'm letting the brush do a lot of the work for me. And with that, it actually becomes, uh, yeah, I, I just find things like that become much more natural than if you try to. Um, to control it too much 
And this is something that I'll be talking about off and on over the, over the course as well, is trying to allow the, the paint and the, um, the brush to do a lot of the work for you. And because you really do end up with, at the moment, um, a much more natural result. And at the moment, I'm just trying to get the way of it without some of it skimming the page, some of it's down, uh, down on the... And some of the marks are darker, some of them are shorter. And ultimately, I think we have... Not bad, not good palm tree, I think. We probably could go a little bit longer. Some of them out here. That's pretty much it for the moment. If you um, so, there's a couple of different ways. A lot of a lot of brush work is about being able to play with your brushes. Um, oh, one thing I forgot to mention earlier, and that is especially with when you're doing tr um, the branches and uh, other things like that. Try not to do um, a tree trunk that does this. Um, I, probably, I find it hard to do the wrong thing, if that makes sense. You, you have it all swoopy. Okay. Um, they don't work as well. Tree trunks tend to be a little bit angular. And so when you're actually doing that, if you work with marks that are more, more angular, it will come across, uh, again, more natural. So just a few things to think about. Uh, so have a go at willow trees, pine trees, palm trees. <laughs> There's, there's a conspiracy here, I think, with peas. <laughs> but anyway. So this time we're going to work with the white tree. So what we're going to do is effectively some negative shape painting. Everybody loves to paint negatively. It, um, it's not as easy as it ever sounds, but at the same time it is definitely part of what we do. So effectively negative painting is painting around a shape. Whereas before we were painting the shape itself, this time we're going to paint around, a sh uh, around it so that we leave the majority of the shape. I'm not going to get too thinking about the very tiny ones. We're just going to do this in a very basic sort of way so that we get that um, aspect of um, white tree in a landscape. So easily to do that is just to work up to that shape that I've made with my paintbrush, um, with my pencil actually even, <coughs> and to just feather that out so that it looks reasonable. 
on this side we'll just do some of that as well. So can you see already it's starting to come through? Uh, and I'm just ignoring this other one that I did here before. Um, I'm a shopper for doing the same thing. Where they cross over is a little interesting. <laughs> this is where you really need to use your pencil to do your outline, even the skinny bits. Um, Otherwise, you don't know what to leave. Yes and no at the same time because I'm it it's not no fine. because there is different ways of actually getting those very tiny ones. Okay. Uh, I would let it go dry before I did any of them. But at the same time, that's not a given that you should actually work uh, with that um, Yeah, so there's different ways of working with to get other whites in there as well. Um, oh, hopefully this will be dry enough that I'll give you my one of my favorites before we go tonight. And on this side, this time it doesn't matter as much how you hold the brush so long as it's something that's comfortable for you. The main thing is that you, I, I do tend, I'm using the tip a lot more this time because I want to be able to work around those marks that I've made with my pencil. wonders. It has a hard time. And I'm just going to pretend there's nothing else happening up the top there. So that sort of is where um, you can probably then just fix up a few of those marks. That looks rather strange there. And that will give you. But effectively what we've done is painted a white tree. Um, obviously it's not going to be totally white and we can play with it a little bit more just by putting a little bit of tone in it in places and all I'm doing is wetting an area so that some of it gets pushed back. So you're making it a blue gum? Well that's what I'm working with. It's a blue gum. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, if that was totally dry, um, one of my favourite tools is a single edge razor blade actually. <laughs> it's probably going to be too wet and, um, and normally I would leave it go. Um, so I'll do some over here where it's dry because otherwise that'll just scratch the paper to pieces. But what this can do is, um, I hope everybody loves that chalk on blackboard sound because this does actually sound a little bit like that. Yeah. See how you can get white marks back into, and effectively you've, I am damaging the paper, but it works. You know, it gives me some nice light marks where um, where I didn't have any before. And you can either just scratch a little bit of it off or you can actually go back to white paper. If I was to do it here where it's all... Um, you can see how it's scratching off a fair bit there. Um, so usually... Yeah, so usually you will leave it until it's dry. Um, but it's a really effective way of um, bringing it back. There is others. Um, a different way would be lifting off. Now this is probably not where I was going to go tonight, but that's okay. 
So lifting off is another way. And for this I definitely haven't actually picked up a tissue tonight. Done one. But I will now. Because that gives me. Okay, so you re wet it and blot it off. That's right. So and so depending way. on what your colour is, indigo does tend to be a little bit staining. But at the same time, it doesn't have to come back to white to be effective. It often is quite effective just having it be an off-white. Um, because a lot of these in the background don't need to be anything else. <coughs> so various ways of working and of course another way would be to use white paint. Uh, again, um, that works um, at times as well. So that would be the lesson for tonight. I think that's probably the last demo. <laughs> so. So we've actually gone through an awful lot yeah. of what we've done. So you've looked at shape, you've looked at direction, we've looked at negative painting, we've looked at um, using our brushes in different ways. Um, the only thing we haven't tackled tonight is colour. I think we've had enough on our plate without that. So, <laughs> and you've all been doing really well, by the way. Um, <laughs> a lot of these brush mark techniques that I'm talking to you about and teaching you, take a while to master. So give yourself a break, mm -hmm. take, take time to practice and, um, and ultimately, uh, you will actually work with, with your brushes in a way that suits you as well. Just because I work that way doesn't mean to say it's something that you will let, um, end up working with as well. Not everybody works the way I do, which is why I get my results and somebody else will get a different result. They'll um, be, be good anyway. Uh, one other thing to do this week is to look at trees. Uh, it's surprising how much that can affect the way you paint because um, taking note of light and shade, taking note of the, the canopies, the way the tree trunks look, how big, how, what, how I'm test my theory on the half, 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 uh, and see how correct I am at least some of the time, <laughs> and, and just go out, have a look at trees, uh, and just think about how they're constructed and how you would paint them. Even at this early stage, it's surprising how much that will affect um, your understanding, I suppose. Are we allowed to talk to them? You can talk to them. You can even yeah. hug them if you want. Absolutely. You can hug a tree too. Yeah, for sure. That's why they put me away, you see. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, I hope not because I talk to myself all the time. <laughs> they might be in real strife if that was the case. <laughs> Yes, you can pay, take photos of anything I do in class. Um, occasionally I'll bring in a decent painting, and if that's the case, I prefer you don't. But no, all of my examples are definitely fair game. Okay? Have a good week. I have tried to ease you into this subject, and will continue in a similar fashion next week. To recap, we were introduced to firstly looking at trees in a detailed way in fact, with artists' eyes. This led to being aware that shape is what defines each species of tree. Then using a single dark colour, we used our brushes in a variety of ways while considering the direction that we moved those brushes to get the effect needed to depict the foliage, trunks and branches. Lastly, looking at a shape in another way, we painted around a tree to leave it white or lighter than its surroundings. We are off to a good start. So next lesson, colour will be added to the mix while still continuing with individual tree shapes, refreshing our memories about shape, direction and brushwork. Some mention of colour mixing, especially greens, will be addressed while revisiting the palm and pine trees and painting them with colour. Also comment below, sharing your own experiences with painting trees or just ask questions when you are unsure of something and join the private Facebook group, Roslyn's Watercolour Classroom, to connect with others who have also joined these classes. 
I'll see you in the next video. Cheers for now. Learn and play your way to excellence in painting because perfection is not a possibility on this side of heaven.